Bless my heart. Amen. Get you a seat. We're going to get going here this morning. I was hoping Brother Will be to say, but he ain't going to say nothing. He's just going to sit back here. Got you. I understand. All right. We're going to get started. Um, it's a privilege to be here today. And uh, I count it a privilege to stand here this morning. The only other place I would prefer to stand this morning would be at my Sunday school class. Because I miss it when I'm not there. You know why that is? Because God has given me the opportunity to teach Sunday school. And you say, well, it's not a big deal. It is to me. You know why? Because God let me do it. Praise the Lord. I don't care what your job is for the Lord. Do it with all your heart. He'll bless you. And I'm blessed to be here today. I'm going to start with a word of prayer. We'll be in 1 Samuel chapter 7, verses 5 through 12. We'll read that here in a minute. We'll just get going. Father, I thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be here this morning. God, I pray this lesson this morning will bless some hearts. And it will encourage people to just stick in there and hang on and keep going. That's my goal today, God. Father, I pray you'll bless this camp meeting service, God. Lord, Holy Spirit, have your way in the services. There's some people that come in, Lord, and they're down depressed. God, I pray you'll lift them up. God, I pray if somebody's unsaved, they'll give their heart to Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray you'll bless every service that's coming this week. Every preacher, Lord, just touch them from one high. Fill them with your Holy Spirit and help them to preach like they never preached before. Bless our time together this morning, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. 1 Samuel chapter 7, verses 5 through 12. And Samuel said, Gather all Israel to Mizpah, and I will pray for you unto the Lord. And they gathered together to Mizpah and drew water and poured it out before the Lord and fasted on that day and said, There we have sinned against the Lord. Samuel judged the children of Israel in Mizpah. When the Philistines heard that the children of Israel were gathered together to Mizpah, the lords of the Philistines went up against Israel. And when the children of Israel heard it, they were afraid of the Philistines. And the children of Israel said to Samuel, Cease not to cry unto the Lord our God for us, that he will save us out of the hands of the Philistines. Samuel took a sucking lamb and offered it for a burnt offering holy unto the Lord. And Samuel cried unto the Lord for Israel. The Lord heard him. And as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. But the Lord thundered a great thunder on that day upon the Philistines and discomfited them. They were smitten before Israel. And the men of Israel went out of Mizpah and pursued the Philistines and smote them until they came under Bethkar. Then Samuel took a stone and set it between Mizpah and Shen, called the name of it Ebenezer, saying, Hitherto hath the Lord helped us. Now this story today, it recounts, and that thing's still good? Yeah, praise the Lord. I, I was worried. It started giving me errors. So, uh, it, it, it recounts something that took place between Samuel and the people of God. The people had turned to idolatry, and, and there was a reason. They had raised up idols at, after God and, and had freed them from bondage and given them a land to live in. Um, they had polluted the worship of God with the worship of those around them. You say, well, why would they do that? Well, uh, some sons of Eli had this idea in their head that the ark of God was like a rabbit's foot. They weren't worshiping the Lord, but they got this idea that if we take the ark of, of God into battle with us, we'll win every time. No matter how we're living, the ark always brings us good luck. And so they said, we're going to take the ark with us and we're going to win this battle. And they took the ark and they lost the ark and lost the battle and they all died. 
You can't live any way you want to and expect God to bless you. It, it just don't work that way. And that's what happened. And, and because they lost the ark, they turned against God. And the ark came back, but we see the, in the verses leading up to the story uh, we read today, the people, what they had done is that they, they, they'd gotten away. The ark didn't come back to where it was supposed to. And since the ark wasn't there, they began worshiping other idols. They started go, going their own way and doing their own thing. You can't do that. So they destroyed the idols, and they made changes in their lives in order to be pleasing to God. Listen, if you want to be pleasing to God, take everything out that you're worshiping, everything else that you're placing in a higher esteem than God. Get rid of all that stuff, and then start worshiping God, and he'll bless you for it. I'm just, that's free. So Samuel calls all the people together, and they meet him in a place that's northwest of Jerusalem called Mizpah. And I was looking it up yesterday, and Brother Kenny came over, and I got all excited because I went to Israel last year with, with Sean, and we went there, and, man, we had a ball. And so once you go there, you, you get it in your brain. It's like, okay, now I was here, and now where was that at? And, Turns out Mizpah was a place I didn't go, so uh, I kept saying, hey, can we go there? And he said, no, we can't. I said, okay, well, um, and that's fine. But the word Mizpah means watchtower, and it symbolizes watching over someone or something, okay? So it's, it's watching over, and, and it was used um, several times in the Old Testament. Mizpah is a place, it was a gathering place. And they would gather there, and it was on a hill, it was like a mountain, and it was a real tall mountain, and they would meet there for various things. They, they met there once uh, to crown Saul as king, they went to Mizpah. And Mizpah was an important place, was a gathering place, a meeting place. And they would get there, and they would go there. And when they went there, it, it, it had a, a symbolic meaning. Mizpah was a place of covenant. It was symbolically saying, as we make this covenant, we want the Lord to watch over you and to me to make sure we keep the covenant we make. <laughs> oh, Lord. So there are some things I want you to notice today. First of all, notice, I want you to see this. The enemy found out they were in Mizpah, and they came there to attack. You say, what are you trying to say? Be prepared when you come to church because the devil won't wait until you leave to attack you. He'll do it while you're here. All right? To see what you're made of. The enemy saw that they're in Mizpah, and they went to Mizpah to worship God. And when they went there to worship God, the enemy said, hey, they're worshiping. Let's go attack them. Uh-huh. You think the devil ain't watching you? He don't know where you're at right now? He knows where you are. Trust me, listen, when you leave here on Friday or Saturday to go home, expect, expect it he's got something for you. Yeah. yeah. If you expect it, it don't bother you near as much, does it? Brother Elton, you should have expected your truck to blow up on the way here, brother. Just want to let you know that. Just expect it, all right? The Apostle Peter writes, be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. The, the picture here is sobriety. Alcohol is a relaxant. The apostle tells us to be watching and stay awake. This isn't the time to be asleep. There's too much at stake, folks. You can't be given up and given in now. He's an opponent. And listen to this. There are some people that are going to give in. It says, seeking whom he may devour. Make sure it's not you. Yeah. yeah. He's looking for somebody because he knows he's going to get somebody. Sure. Make sure that somebody's not you this week, will you? Make sure it's not you. Amen. The enemy is coming to attack and he's ready to fight. The second thing I want you to notice is it won't always be easy to fight. Now, when you, when you go to worship... They took tools for worship and not tools for war. It's hard to beat the enemy off 
with a bass guitar, Ed. Amen? You don't take a set of drumsticks to a battle. All right? You don't take a piano to a battle. Unless you're going to go out there and play for the people to play while they're, okay, you guys fight and I'll play piano for you. It don't work that way. So the enemy is going to attack you and make sure you've got what you need to attack him back. This is your defensive weapon. This is what you're going to attack him with. All right? So when he comes at you, make sure you got something. Make sure you got your sword handy. Praise the Lord. Yeah. So, note the enemy usually attacks when you're not ready. Great Sunday services expect attack either when you get home or Monday morning. He wants you to lose heart, turn around, and run. If he gets you on the run, it's easy to attack because there's no armor in the backside. Amen? A lot of people turn around and run. Don't run. Don't run. If you, can't, if you don't run, just stand your ground. Does that mean we're supposed to live in constant fear? No. No. We don't live in fear because we're afraid he's going to attack. You just stand your ground for God. Praise the Lord. We trust in a conquering king, and trust me, he's big enough for this little battle today. Whatever it is, he, he can take care of it. So what happened when the people became afraid? They had Samuel talk to God for them. He prayed, and God took over. Amen? God's looking for someone who's going to trust rather than turn away. We got to trust the Lord. So it was, it's, it's time to worship. Notice what Samuel does. As his act of worship, it says he offers a suckling lamb. Now, this lamb, according to the law, would be at least seven days old. And being offered as a burnt offering, it was being offered as worship to God. This was not uh, an animal that would be offered as a sin offering. Not offered as a trespass offering, but being offered as a burnt offering, it's saying, God, I want to commune with you. When you come to the house of God, do you come here to commune with him or to talk to your friends about where you're going to eat after church? Huh? What's your purpose in coming this morning? That's... That's my question for you. Why did you come today? What's your purpose? He offered this saying, God, I want to have, I want to have communion with you. Can we have communion? You say, do you have to have uh, the grape juice and the bread to have communion? No, 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 no. That's a special service. I'm talking about just communion with God saying, God, come in and fill me today and do something in my life to change me into what you want me to be. And that's what Samuel was telling God. Hey, I'm going to offer this sacrifice, and I got something. There's something I want from you. So what was the offering? What was an innocent little lamb? It was a blood sacrifice to reinstate the communion that had been lost over the year. Now, understand that the Ark of the Covenant had been gone for 20 years. So if the Ark of the Covenant's gone for 20 years, where there's no mercy seat, there's no atonement. You get that? There's no atonement without the mercy seat back in the Old Testament days. You couldn't have it. And so they hadn't taken a, a blood sacrifice in and sprinkled the blood on the mercy seat. There had been no communion. There had been no worship. So their worship was incomplete. Now get this. If you're not worshiping God, you're worshiping yourself. Did you get that? Now, I want to make sure you get this. If you're not worshiping God, you're worshiping you. I'm worshiping me if I'm not worshiping God. You say, well, what's that mean? I'm doing what I want to do. And if you're just doing what you want to do all the time, basically you're worshiping yourself. You're going to serve somebody. You're either trying to lift up the creator or your own ego. You can't have it both ways. The Bible says, for the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. You can't worship God and something. His worship has to be exclusive to him only. Him only. 
So see what takes place? As the sacrifice is burning up, Samuel's prayer is going up. Notice what it says next. And the Lord heard him. Aren't you glad the Lord still hears? <laughs> Man, you know what? I've messed up so many times in my life, but I'm so glad that he still hears. He hears, he answers prayer. Listen, you make a big mistake, you may mess up your life royally, and God will still hear you. He will hear you when you repent, and the people says, we have sinned against the Lord. Know what they said? They, did, they confessed to God, we have sinned against the Lord. When you confess your sins, he's faithful to forgive you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And you're glad to know that after the after the sin problems out of the way, he's ready to hear you. Psalm 66, verse 18 through 20. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. But verily, God hath heard me. He hath attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, which hath not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. Oh, praise the Lord today. Praise the Lord, he has mercy and he'll forgive and he'll pardon sin and he'll love you back. Well, praise the Lord. I didn't mean to do that in Sunday school. Sorry, Will. <clears throat> and if another sin crops up, just remember if you confess, he'll forgive. When the Lord heard him, he answered him as well. With thunderings from heaven, the Lord it says God discomfited or he put in commotion the Philistines. Now, understand the Philistines weren't newbies till the war. <laughs> they weren't newbies. They were good at it. They were the best. They, were, they had iron chariots. Nobody else had iron chariots. They had iron chariots. Man, they were solid. And to beat a group like the Philistines said, man, you, either you had something or God was on your side, one of the two. So they knew what war was about and... By this time, they, uh, they weren't fighting men, but the, it turns out they were fighting God. Yeah. And when you're fighting God, you're never going to win. Amen. Okay? You, you just, it's not going to happen. So finally, today, and, and, and I've gone pretty quick, but I'm getting down to what I think is the peak of the story. And this is, this is where it picks up for me, Mike. It's, this is... This is it for me right here. I, I, I like this part of the story. I think it's the best part. Samuel takes a stone and sets up a memorial. It's something that lets people see what God had done. I believe it's important. Pardon me. I believe it's important that we set up memorials. Need to have memorials. I think you need to have one in your house that the kids can see. There needs to be things in your life you set up as a memorial. And when people see it, or when you see it, you look back on it and say, Man, God did that for me. Maybe it's an altar in your church. Maybe it's a place where you go to pray, like Brother Leonard does, and he's got a rock. And I know I, I've been to Chris's church and I've seen the rock where Leonard prayed. And, I've seen people go break a piece off of it and take it home. And they'll take that home and they'll think, hey, this is where Leonard prayed. God will answer my prayer too. Memorials. They're so important for us. Notice how he states it. He says, hitherto hath the Lord helped us. It's called an Ebenezer or a stone of help. Stone of help. And I, I saw the word Ebenezer, and I remember when I was in college, I went to a, a big fancy church, and they didn't sing like they sing here. And they, of course, they didn't have drums were the devil, and the bass, what in the world is that? It's got strings on it, and you don't hit it with your fingers like that, so that's got to be of Satan, too. And guitars, oh, you don't, you don't use that in church. I don't know what you're thinking. I went to a church that had only piano on one side and, a, and a, an organ on, on the other side, and it was a pipe organ. And they put pipes all over the church, and when they hit that thing, man, it would bring you out of your seat, I guarantee it. Uh, and that made everybody stand for church, so it was good. It had, it had a purpose anyway. 
And while, we were, while I was there, I, I heard this song sung. Come thou fount of every blessing. And in the second verse, it says, Sorrowing I shall be in spirit till released from flesh and sin. Yet from what I do inherit, there thy praises I'll begin. Here I raise my Ebenezer. Here by thy great help I've come. And I hope by thy good pleasure, safely to arrive at home. And I always saw that word Ebenezer. Mike and I said, like, what in the world is Ebenezer Scrooge doing in this song? Because I didn't know what it was. And then I read it, and I saw the Ebenezer, and then I started studying what Ebenezer was. And when I saw what Ebenezer was, then I, I looked back at the song, and I said, oh, I get it. And Ebenezer was a stone of help. It was a memorial set up. And the writer of the song says, here I raise my Ebenezer, my stone of help, my memorial. I raise this up and I, I see that by your help, God, I've made it this far. Your help has got me this far. It's not what I've done. It's what he's done. And because of his help, I've made it this far. And I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. So like I said, I, I wondered what they meant. How do you raise an Ebenezer? Well, you put it on display for you and others to see what God's done for you. Today, I'd like to give you a chance to raise your own Ebenezer. I'd like to give some people stones today that represent that. There's some people that God's really kind of helped you in the past year, and I, I want to give you a stone. Brother Kenny... I see as you walk and you climb up to play the piano, it's tough for you. You told me yesterday you traveled. You was at home 65 days yesterday, last year. That means they're on the road 300 days out of the year. That's dedication. I want you to take this and I want you to keep it with you. You don't have to put it in your pocket. You can put it on the dash of your, your car. Put it in your little cup holder. And when you look at it, say, Lord, you got me this far. I know you'll get me the rest of the way. Bless you, buddy. DJ, I see what you put on the internet, buddy. I see your posts. Devil likes to beat you down. I want you to take this and keep it with you. You can keep it in your little tray there. Whenever the devil starts beating you up, just hold that rock up and say, well, the Lord's got me this far. I think he can get me the rest of the way. Eddie, Eddie, you've been through some tough times, buddy. It's been rough on you. I know it has. It's rough on you and Terry. It's rough on your family, rough on your friends and your church family. Buddy, I just want you to take your stone right here and whenever the devil starts giving it to you, you just tell him, well, God got me this far. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. <sighs> Betty, where you at, babe? Would you stand up for me? I saw you come in. Betty Witt, you here, honey? Will said, said, you've had a tough time. Would you hold on to that for me? Sister, my cousin Jeff, his wife, Lisa, just went through cancer last year, and I gave her a stone at service. I said, you to hold on to this, and it blessed her. And I told her this week, I said, i got to go to Florida and get there early so I can buy some rocks to give out to people. 
And she said, mine is sitting in my windowsill and I see it every day when I'm doing the dishes and I say, hey, praise the Lord, he's got me this far. He'll give me the rest of the way. Donnie, Donnie Colgan, where you at, buddy? Donnie, you here? Right back there. Hey, Donnie, here. Heard you having some problems. Had some heart things going on. Listen, man. Won't you take this? You take that. You hang on to that. Listen, if he's got you this far, you think he can get you the rest of the way, buddy? Praise the Lord. I got one more person I'm going to mention today. Doris Powell, where you at, babe? Doris, I'm coming to see you. I got this for you. Your husband's gone. He went on, but listen, the Lord's got you this far. You think he can get you the rest of the way, too? Bless you, honey. Here you go, hon. Now, listen, I bought a bag of rocks. Everybody that wants one, you come up and get one right now. If you want one, come up and get it. I mean it. I want you to get one. I want everybody to get one. Come up and get you one. I want everybody. Come on now. Don't just sit there. I want everybody to get one. I can't pass them out because they're too heavy. I want you to come and get you one. Get you one. Come on, man. Get you one. Don't just sit there. Get you a rock. Climb up there and get you one. Listen, here's what I, I want you to take this with you. Now, here's the be, one of the best things you can do is put it in your pocket so if you fly back home, the TSA has to look at it. When I came here, the TSA took my bags aside and said, what all you got in here anyway? I had rock. I carried my rock with me. I carry it with me. I take it where I go. I carry it with me. I have a friend say, I keep mine out in my truck when I'm driving back and forth in my truck. I see it all the time. Truck drivers, put it in your cup holder. Carry it with you. And here's why I want everybody to get one, because we're going to do something special with it this morning. And no, it's not throw it at Mike during the morning message. That's not it. I want you to do something special with your stone. Get you one. Get you a stone. I bought a bunch of them. And if we run out, I'll go buy another bag. See, I carry this with me, and sometimes I just reach in my pocket. When I reach in my pocket, I pull, my, I pull this out. Or I just rub it with my finger. I'm looking for my keys, and I get in there, and I touch that thing, and I just get a blessing. Somebody said, how come you don't have handouts today? I said, I got handouts. This is not the way you think they are. I said, I guarantee every time you touch this rock, and you pick it up, and you look at it, you'll think to yourself, hey, I remember that Sunday morning when that, that guy gave it to me yeah. in Sunday school, and you'll never forget this Sunday school hour. Is that a West Virginia rock? No, it's actually from Mexico, bless your heart. Yeah, that's what they told me. I don't know. It's, I bought them down the road there. They sold me a bag of them. I told the guy what I was going to do, and he, he just shook his head. I said, I'm giving them out in Sunday school. He's like, all right, whatever. Do you know what, though? I got this rock, and I carry my rock with me. It means something to me, but it don't mean nothing to nobody if they weren't here today, it don't mean nothing to them. I had somebody say, hey, give me some rocks. I want to give them to my family. You know what I said to them? I said, Tell your family to come to Sunday school and they can get one. They said, what do you mean? I said, it won't mean nothing to them if they didn't hear the story. Amen? Listen. Hey, he's handing them out. Look at you. Now, they might be a little bit dirty, but after you've Wallowed it around for a while. It'll be clean. Put it inside your suit pocket. That'll, that'll clean it up. Then you go to the dry cleaners and they'll take care of that part.
I love this method of doing handouts. This is great. Has it got you this far? You think you can get your rest away? <laughs> Praise the Lord, Brother Mike. I'm loving this, buddy. So you got this stone now. Okay, now here's what I want you to do. If you've got the stone, I want you to, number one, I want you to carry it with you some. All right? Carry it around during camp meeting. Just stick it in your pocket. Put it next to your keys. And then just pull it out and rub it once in a while. Now, listen, I, I want you to understand this. This isn't something we worship. Okay? You don't worship the stone. <laughs> Jesus was the rock in the wilderness. I worship him. Amen? All right? So this isn't a rock of worship. This is a rock of memorial. And it reminds you every time you touch it. What? Hitherto hath the Lord helped us. If he got you this far, don't you think, huh? Don't you think he'll see you through? Huh? All right, now, I think it's time for us, if you've got a stone today, and you have, you've got them claimed, it's time to raise your Ebenezer stone today. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to stand. If you've got a stone, I want you to, well, you're already standing up there, buddy. You're good. I want you to raise your stone to the Lord. Raise your stones. Now take your other hand and hold it and raise it too. Amen. Now you got your hands raised in church. You know what that means? You're ready to worship the Lord today. Are you ready to worship God today? Are you ready for the service to begin? Huh? Praise the Lord. Listen. You raise your stone. Hitherto hath the Lord helped us. Has he helped you? If you didn't get you a stone, listen, there's plenty left. Take all you want. There's plenty left, and I don't know what I'm going to do with them after I get done anyway. So I certainly ain't going to take them home. If he's got you this far, maybe, just maybe, he can get you the rest of the way. Huh? You think so? Brother Sean, he was went to uh, West Virginia and I was telling, I was telling Will and his dad about this yesterday. They didn't know. I, he preached it in a message at church a while back about uh, he, he'd gone to West Virginia he was with his, his I think it's his dad's uncle, John. And he said, I looked back and he said, I saw praise the Lord, that means I'm done. Uh He said, his uncle, great uncle John, he was back in the back of the church. He said, and I looked and I saw him and said, he, when he'd get happy, he'd put his finger up like this. And then he'd go, boom. <laughs> he said, and the preacher would get up and say something else. And he'd go, boom. <laughs> and he said, after church, I went back to him and said, Uncle Johnny, what in the world are you doing? I'd never seen anybody do that before. His Uncle Johnny said, well, I look at it this way. If he's done it once, he can do it again. So if he's, take, if he's got you through, you just look at somebody else and say, hey, he'll get you through too. Amen? If he's gotten you through something this morning, will you do me a favor? Will you turn to your neighbor and say, he got me through. I think he can get you through too. Do that real quick. He can get you through. Take that stone, remember. Remember what God's done for you. And when you feel a little down and depressed and saying nothing's going my way, just pull that little rock out. Just hang on to it and say, God, I think you can take care of me. 
I trust you that much. Lord, I thank you today, God. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings. Thank you, Lord, for this time together. Lord, I pray we brighten somebody's day and give them some, some way to look up and look closer and, and see things in a better perspective, God. God, I pray you'll bless your people today. Holy Spirit, touch hearts today, we pray. Bless the singers going to sing in this morning service. Bless the preacher that preaches. Holy Spirit, have your way in the service, we pray today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you for coming today.